Good evening sa inyong lahat guys. Maraming maraming salamat sa pagkiklik ng video na ito. I really really appreciate it. So without any further ado, let's get into the content. I am back with another PC building video pero this is different kasi this is a mid-range PC build. Okay, so some of the components here doesn't belong in the mid-range category. Katulad nung gagamitin natin CPU, pero the rest of the products or the rest of the components naman is pwede na. This build nga pala guys is an AMD build which is sobrang familiar na ako dito kasi halos lahat or karamihan sa na-build ko is puro AMD. Ang total ng build na ito guys ay 100k+. plus. Okay, so uh, huwag kayong masyadong mainis kasi nga this is a mid-range build. This is not a budget build. And also guys, kung makikita nyo maya-maya lang no, yung mga parts, the price is actually pang mid-range. Yung iba nga is pang budget. Pero guys, this video would not be possible without the help of walang iba kundi ang Gigabyte Philippines. So, maraming maraming salamat Gigabyte Philippines sa pagpo-provide ng mga components and parts for this build. And also maraming maraming salamat kay Sir Martin na napakadali ka usap. So ito guys, without any further ado, sisimulan ko nang i-introduce sa inyo guys yung mga gagamitin natin parts or components for this build. Simulan na natin ngayon dito sa CPU. Ang gagamitin natin is walang iba kundi ang AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. Yes, I know guys, pwede na itong pumasok sa high-end build. Pero definitely, pasok pa rin naman to sa mid-range. Kasi guys, meron pang mas mataas din. Ito, no, yung 5950X. This processor has a whopping 12 cores and 24 threads, clocking at 3.7 GHz base frequency up to 4.8 GHz boost frequency. This is so cool guys, no? kasi ngayon lang ako nakakita sa personal na ang box ng CPU, ang, ang sticker seal niya is, ang nakalagay is not for resale. Ayan, nakikita nyo ba? Nababasa nyo ba? Ayan, di ba? Nakalagay not for resale. Sa tingin ko guys, this processor came directly from AMD tapos ibinigay nila sa mga companies no tulad ng Gigabyte para iparotate nila sa mga PC builders no <laughs> wow that's so cool speaking of cool we are not going to compromise the thermals of this processor <laughs> o oh, di ba smooth transition <laughs> ang gagamitin ko cooler walang iba guys kundi ang Gigabyte Aorus ATC 800 after having an experience sa AIO, it's nice to be back sa paggamit ng air cooler. The Gigabyte Aorus ATC 800 has a massive heatsink and dalawang 120mm fans to keep our CPU cool even under load. Next, for the motherboard guys, ang gagamitin natin is walang iba kundi ang Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master. This motherboard has a support for 3rd gen AMD Ryzen desktop processors with socket AM4. It has an ATX form factor so meron itong apat na memory DIMM slots so supported nito ang dual channel memory architecture. Speaking of RAM, <laughs> o diba, pilit na pilit pa <laughs> Ang gagamitin natin is iba. This is the Team Group T-Force Extreme ARGB. This is a 16GB 2x8GB memory kit clocking at 3200MHz with 16181838 for the timings tamang-tama para sa ating mid-range gaming build. Ituloy na natin ang hype sa Team Group. Next naman, isang storage. Ang gagamitin ko is ang Team Group T-Force Delta Max SATA SSD. This is a 500GB SSD storage with a max sequential read of up to 560MB per second and a max sequential write of up to 510MB per second. Yes guys, we are not going to use an NVMe SSD for this build, pero SSD is still an SSD. This SSD guys is still faster than mechanical drives or yung mga hard drives. So guys, when it comes to loading time, booting up our system and opening up our applications won't be a problem. Next, of course guys, this gaming build would not be complete without a video card. I am going to use the Gigabyte RX 5600 XT. Okay, so guys, to be completely honest, no, this is my first time ever in my life na gumamit ng AMD video card. So, this is completely new for me. I don't know what to expect, pero we'll see. This video card has 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 video memory clocking up 1560 megahertz game clock up to 1620 megahertz boost clock. Syempre hindi naman ito gagana ng sila lang na we need a source of power. For the PSU, ang gagamitin ko for this build is the Gigabyte P650B 80 plus bronze power supply. This PSU should be enough para mag-provide ng power para sa ating processor at video card and the remaining components for this build. Okay, so uh, meron ako isang problema. Or, or dalawang, sige, dalawa na. Meron akong dalawang problema para sa power supply na to. 
Una guys is this power supply is non-modular. Meaning yung mga cables na nandito sa power supply guys is built in. Okay, nandito na talaga siya. So, wala akong choice kundi isama yung mga cables na hindi ko naman gagamitin doon sa case. Pangalawa guys is built in na nga yung cables nito. Tapos yung cables pa is yung may mga kulay. Ito yung tinatawag na ketchup and mustard cables. Sayang hindi pure black yung uh, kulay ng cables no? para kahit papano neutral lang yung color. And kahit man lang sana semi-modular para man lang sana matanggal yung mga cables na hindi naman gagamitin. Pero that's fine. No? Moving on, this build would not be complete without a computer case. For the case guys, I am going to use the Gigabyte Oro C300 Glass. I personally chose this case. No, ni-request ko ito kay Sir Martin. Sabi ko, Sir, sa next build, gusto ko sanang matry yung um, Gigabyte C300 Glass. Sabi niya, sige, no problem. <laughs> Nagustuhan ko itong case na to kasi hindi malaki, hindi din maliit. Sakto lang talaga. Personally, ayoko kasi nung case na malaki nga, pero kalahati lang yung may laman. Also guys, buti na lang yung tempered glass nito is medyo tinted. No, by the looks of it, medyo tinted siya. So hopefully yung um, kulay ng cables ng power supply natin is hindi masyadong manotis. So, that is all for the components, guys. Ngayon naman, ibibuild ko na ito real quick. Let's go! Perfect!
And now guys, the build is done and tapos ko na rin itong i-benchmark. The build experience guys is so smooth, no? Wala na encounter na problema, wala naging problem. Sobrang basic lang. Okay guys, hindi ako nagyayabang, no? Pag nung sinabi kong basic, no? Hindi ako nag nagyayabang. Sobrang dali lang talaga niyang i-build kasi wala ditong AIO, wala rin dito yung mga RGB fans. So meaning, um, less configuration yung gagawin nyo. And also, the cable management, masasabi kong decent naman. Considering na this power supply is non-modular, no? Ibig sabihin may mga cables ako na hindi nagamit. Pero still, the cable management is... Okay lang. Bago ko ipakita sa inyo guys yung benchmark result na itong build is, gusto ko lamang sabihin sa inyo na please do follow me on uh, my other social media pages, no? Yung, uh, yung Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram kasi nag upload ako doon or nagpo-post ako doon ng mga update na hindi ko ginagawa dito sa YouTube. And also guys, kung nagustuhan nyo yung content so far, please do hit the like button and also consider subscribing dito sa channel ko with notification bell on, no? Para pagka sa next time nagagawa or mag upload ako ng ganitong klase ng content ay eh, maging updated kayo. Okay? Now, For the benchmark guys, no? ngayon pa lang, sasabihin ko na sa inyo na merong bottlenecking na naganap dito. Okay, so hindi naman sobrang laking bottlenecking to the point na maapektuhan na yung performance. Okay, hindi naman masyado naapektuhan yung performance. Ipapakita ko muna sa inyo guys yung mga benchmark result right now. As you can see here guys, dito sa Valorant gameplay, our GPU is constantly at around 70 to 99% of the time, pero ang CPU natin is only around 10 to 23% lang. This is a good example of bottlenecking, pero katulad nga na sinabi ko kanina, hindi naman ganun kalala, kaya hindi masyado naapektuhan yung performance. Hindi ito nire-recommend pero as you can see, playable pa din naman ang Valorant kasi nakakakuha tayo ng 300 plus up to 500 plus frames per second. Nung una pa lang, naisip ko na yun, napansin ko na yun nung una pa lang kasi Ryzen 9 5900X, i-partner mo ba naman sa RX 5600 XT? <laughs> Good luck! Pero still guys, at the end of the day, GPU performs well sa games and CPU performs well in multi-threaded core applications and softwares. If you still can and want to play the game, even if it is bottlenecking, then honestly, wala akong magagawa. Yan ang gusto nyo, so go lang. So, that is it for the video guys. Maraming maraming salamat sa panonood na itong munting PC build and benchmark video na ginawa ko. Once again, maraming maraming salamat sa Gigabyte Philippines for making this video possible. And also kay Sir Martin na napakasipag na lagi pupunta dito para magbigay ng mga products and share nyo kukuha yung mga ganun. So, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo guys. So guys, as usual, kung nagustuhan nyo yung video, please hit the like button. And kung hindi nyo naman nagustuhan, kayo na bahala dyan, you can do what everyone, it's a free country. Also guys, comment kayo sa comment section down below. Let me know kung what kind of build or what type of build ba na meron kayo. Meron ba kayong budget, no? Or yung pang casual lang, or gaming build, or workstation, or hybrid, or kung ano man yan. Basta let me know sa comment section down below kasi gusto ko lang malaman. Also guys, subscribe kayo dito sa channel kasi napakarami pang tech-related videos as well as unboxing, product and reviews, and PC building videos coming up very very soon. Once again guys, my name is CJ and magkita-kita tayo sa susunod kong video.